I didn't get the chance before I ended the episode on Sunday to uh, get these latches on. Um, I just ran out of time, it was getting a bit dark in here. Um, but Susie saw the vlog uh, from the UK, loves the cover, loves the hinges. Uh, so when she gets back today, she'll see the latches on. So yeah, she's gonna be happy with that. We are Susie and Rolls. That's short for Roland, by the way. Enchanté. Follow our lives renovating a 15th century chateau and citadel. Together with our rescue fur babies, Big Baxter, Mad Max and little Lexi our beaver. You may recall a little while ago, I borrowed this lock from this door here. Uh, I put it on our gate outside, uh, just as a temporary measure for a year or so until we get the new gates. Uh, but however, it... <coughs> however, it did leave me with rather a gaping hole in my door. And the last time I looked, I don't remember seeing sellotape being recommended as a way of um, insulating your home. So I need to plug this, otherwise no point in having the log burner and then a great big draft coming through. Hello boy. Yeah, good boy. No, it's just a piece of wood. Not to eat. <laughs> Seriously, you don't want to eat this. It's wood. Look, smell it, but don't lick it. <laughs> no, get away. Right, I managed to get that stuck in. Um, whilst the dogs are having a nap, and I've left it overnight actually. Uh, that's well and truly stuck, that's glued in nicely. So I'm just gonna trim that off. Now there's a slight gap in a couple of places, just where I've uh, made the plug just that little bit narrow. That's the only plug um, attachment I had. So, what I need to do, just get some glue in there. Only a little. And then get some sanding disc, get a little, I've just used an old socket the socket set and then just rub it in and um, what will happen is the sawdust will go in the gap with the glue It's a nice quick and easy job. So that's now filled with sawdust, just a little bit there. Just finish it off by hand. Nice and neat. Yeah, feels good. And the same on the other side. So I'll get a little bit of white paint just to go over it. We're gonna refurb this door probably next spring, summer. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about it now, but I'll just get some white paint over there to protect it and I'll get a bit of a darker stain on this side just to blend it in a bit more. Um, but that's quite a neat little trick for filling 
little gaps. Uh, just a bit of sawdust and a bit of uh, glue. Well, Susie's back, driving herself home today. Had a nice time? Yeah, I had a really nice time. Uh, it was nice to see family catch up and see my great nieces, the twins that I haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, get my Christmas fix. Yeah. Went to a beautiful garden centre in Hertfordshire, Van Hakes, and the displays were amazing, best I've ever seen, and I've seen a few, so yeah, that, it was lovely. Just um, shame it went so fast. Didn't have time to do all the things that I wanted to do or see all the people I wanted to see. Yeah, they always go too quick, don't they? Yeah. But you did cram a lot in by the sounds of it, so. Yeah, yeah that's I good. Did, did do a bit of shopping. Not a lot. Did you? Don't worry, I didn't spend too much. Whew. Relieved, relieved. <laughs> So, of course, the talk is going to be about Christmas from now on, isn't it? I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Now, the trouble is, uh, when Susie flew out, she went from Poitiers, which is an hour and five minutes, that, that airport, from home. Hour and five. But she's flown into a different airport today, which is an hour and 40 minutes from home. So, I've got to spend one hour, 40 minutes, listening about Christmas <laughs> atmosphere stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, my sister put her decorations up especially for me, so Good. that was really nice. Okay. Well, obviously ours, we're traditional in our family, our Christmas decorations go up for the 12 days of Christmas. No. No. No, they normally go up beginning of December. Yes, a little bit early, but um, anyway, it's November, so we've got two or three weeks to anyway, worry about that. Anyway, I've already bought a Christmas tree. Right. We've already got one. We bought one a few weeks ago. We did. We bought a second Christmas tree because apparently one isn't enough. No, the other one wasn't big enough. Apparently the other one wasn't big enough. <laughs> and while I, while I was away, I redesigned the kitchen layout. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's another conversation then. <laughs> <laughs> So that needs to be done before we put the tree up. Right, okay. And then when Michael, the electrician, comes, he said beginning of December, I need a, a socket for the Christmas tree and things. Okay. Well, the good news is we're one hour, 30 minutes from home. <laughs> <laughs> um, whilst I've been away, this is one of the jobs Rolls has done, and I'm really pleased with it. Its hinges look lovely, and he's now put the latches on. So, yeah, it's a good job. Following on from Rolls Tower Tales, um, while I was away, um, I'm interested to know why these bottom stones on the tower are broken. So, um, if we look here, there's the door into the cab here, and I would like Rolls to go down there and drill, I think the wall comes to about here, before the tower, I'd like him to drill through there, underneath the stairs. Uh, the other option is behind this wall is the barn, so we could drill through that way. Um, and somebody said, are we going to take all the plaster off anyway and take it back to the stone? But I'm not convinced it's nice stone worth rendering. Uh, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'd like to show you the tower windows also. Uh, last year before I became ill, um, in the summer, I chiselled off some of the plaster here because um, I wanted to take it back to the stonework. But looking at the windowsill, the stonework doesn't look very good there. I uh, chiselled off, it had been plastered before. There are some big 
stones here, but they've been hammered, I think, to, so they could um, plaster it. But I'm not sure whether it's worth actually taking it back to the stone. So I'll probably replaster these window sills. This is the one at the top of the stairs which has been plastered. It had wallpaper on which I took off because it was coming off. And this one's actually quite nice. It's got an arched top on here and the stonework's actually not too bad. But again, they plastered the window sill. But on this one, you've got these stones at the side here. Another window with all my junk on at the minute. But this, they've actually painted the stonework in here. Um, sorry about the glare. It looks like some kind of emulsion. So that probably would brush off as, um, I'll show you the big window. Now they've used emulsion on the walls. There's some mauve paint underneath this and I've brushed this area off. So this has come off quite nicely, but it's it's going to be a real mess. It's my wallpapers. And it's got a sill in it, like the one in the Grand Salon. The plastering goes all the way up the tower and into the attic. And actually years ago they did have it papered so it's all I think it's always been plastered but probably not in the early days as it was built in 1405 I think now if I take you up into the attic you can see the state of the plaster here and there are some remnants of wallpaper which I would like to replicate Ceiling's not good there. Um, but there is the window here. It's got a sloping sill. And the plaster's all dropped off there. We need some new glass in there. So I don't know. I think we'll probably get it replastered for now because it would be a major job to chip all this off. Right, I'm in the corner of the kitchen. Uh, this is a medieval old sink. Um, we did have two shelves up here, uh, but they are pretty rotten actually, so they've gone. Uh, we've put a bit of filler in where uh, the old brackets were, because uh, it was all a bit rough and it crumbled. So I've got to rub all this down, get it smoothed off, uh, make some new brackets, although I think I've still got some left over from when I did the spice cupboard, so I may be able to actually utilise those. And then I've got to find some wood um, to make two shelves. And again, we want it to be rustic, so hopefully I'll be able to find some wood with some wavy edges or something like that. Um, so that's the task. So I've got to first of all get rubbing.
was going to continue this as a bit of a time lapse, but unfortunately the weather's taken a bit of a turn and I can't film in the barn, it's too dark and because uh, it's raining I couldn't film outside. So, and I wasn't about to cut all the wood in here and create more dust. So, anyway, what I did is I took uh, one of the original shelves as a template and I cut the first piece of wood slightly wider so I could just keep coming back to it. And I, I probably just... Um, made about 10 cuts just really thin cuts down each side just to get it in there um, and then I used that as a template from that so uh, or vice versa um, and nice shape you probably can't see it on camera but nice shape to the front it's all a bit hickledy pickledy bit wobbly um, yeah I'm really pleased that I've treated them for woodworm and where I got the wood from uh, one of the good things about um, being left various armoires or wardrobes, um, the French tend to fold their clothes so they have lots of shelves in them. Uh, as we, you know, in Britain certainly, uh, we like to hang our clothes. So we've got various shelves now spare. So all I've done is I've used the shelves from the armoires and then just shaped the front a little bit. And there's been some, there's some natural, there's, there was a knot in there here. Uh, so it's all a bit, uh, but it's lovely. It's very rustic, beautiful. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, I'm not fixing them to the brackets just yet because we've got a paint in here and I'll paint the brackets so they'll sort of blend in. Um, yeah, we're, we're happy, Susie's happy. So good job, I'm, ha I'm very happy with that. And in case you're wondering, there is a reason why we've left the larger gap under the uh, bottom shelf. And first of all, we've put the shelves roughly back where they were originally. Basically what we're going to do here is put a little table lamp in there, in that corner, on the old stone sink. So that will illuminate this corner. So that's why I, I did think about evenly spacing it. So we had three even spaces uh, between the shelves and the, um, the sink. But uh, then we would have struggled to get a, a, a table lamp in there. And that's what we've, that's, that would be our preferred choice. So, so that's why we've left that gap uh, slightly higher at the bottom. And then, of course, we've got the bit right down at the bottom to do something with. Got one or two ideas there, though. Uh, right. Um, before I close this bit up, I wanted to say a big thank you to Meredith and Brian and Kathy. Um, bought some coffee, so thank you very much. Very kind. And we are using all the monies uh, to put into the place. So, you know, we buy a pot of paint every now and then. Might not be the most exciting thing, but it helps us and it really does mean a lot to us. We really appreciate the support. And to all our patrons as well, of course, whose support is brilliant. And thank you once again to all of you for watching and subscribing. The, the numbers are going up. We're on 4,810 subscribers now. So we're, we're pushing 5,000. So not bad. We've only been going seven months. And, um, you know, from a standing start, with no experience of this sort of thing. So yeah, we're really happy and hopefully we'll get up to 5,000 before too long. So if you haven't subscribed, <laughs> click. <laughs> Thank you. And the other thing is, um, personally, I think it's a bit too early for all this Christmas talk, but Susie, she's come back now. She's got her Christmas fix. And of course the conversation is gonna be nothing but Christmas. So if I'm having to suffer it, so are you. So we're going to end with some more of Susie's Christmas images from the UK. So I'd like to say a big thank you and goodbye. And we shall see you Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>